We can relax. Are you everybody feel okay? Whoa! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! If you want to cultivate the land in South Africa, say these farmers, this is the sort of training you need. A two-week tactical survival course run by a former member of the Israeli Special Forces. Idan Abolnik is teaching this group how to ward off or neutralize the enemy, a self-described practical guide to staying alive. They're here because they want to make a difference. They want to, they want to defend their life, to feel more secure for, for the family and for them. And his pupils claim plenty of real-world experience. I've been attacked myself, and these attackers were, were trained, trained very well. So um, I got shot in, in, in my face, and, I, and I, well, you can see the marks over there. And I got stabbed nine times by a knife, but I survived it. It's personal accounts like these that fuel the sense of fear. Fight! And people like Marley Swanepoel think they're being targeted because they're white. Good. It's, uh, it's pretty intense. Isn't it? This is not intense. What's happening in our country? And I get very emotional about it. I'm... What is happening in South Africa? Um, our people are getting murdered, tortured. Our old people who can't defend themselves are being um, burned with cooking oil. The numbers just rising by the day. It's rising by, I mean, we've, you are always worried that you will be the next. Crime stalks the lives of all South Africans, but farmers feel particularly vulnerable. 74 were killed last year, according to official statistics, although many think the true picture is worse. Those farm attacks are brutal, and usually they don't steal anything. So there's something, we don't know what it is, but they're just getting murdered, and then they leave. But blacks are also victims of brutal crimes. Two white farmers tried to seal this 20-year-old into a coffin. The farmers were convicted of attempted murder last year. Crime happens to everyone. It's criminality that is happening in the farms, and uh, we have always condemned it. But this crime does not only happen to white farmers. It also happened to black farm workers. The case lit a fuse and drew large protests at court. White farmers own vast tracts of land in South Africa and receive little sympathy. The white people's quality of life in this country is at its highest. They live a, world, a first world lifestyle in a third world country. And the majority of the population lives a third world lifestyle in a third world country. So, and that majority is the blacks. So the ruling ANC is taking drastic action. They've adopted a new policy called land expropriation without compensation. Gracias. A decision that deeply worries people like Philip Pothita. He's a fourth generation farmer in the hills of Limpopo. It's worrying because promises are being made to the masses. And you don't want to make promises to the masses and not deliver. So currently it's it's a boiling pot. We grew year by year. Mr. Podhita took us for a tour of his avocado and nut farm. It's a profitable business, employing hundreds of local people. And he's not prepared to hand it over. It's in our blood, our ancestors, our fathers, grandfathers. This is what we were born to do. I mean, where do I go? I can't just pack up here and leave everything we've done here. This farm is already subject to four claims filed by community groups who say the land originally belonged to them. And the official overseeing the process says Mr. Pothita will have to come to the table. What do you say to a guy who owns land that's been in the family for four or five generations? There's nothing we can do, but we can put you through the process together with the community until we find a way out of this, because it needs to happen. So if it needs to happen, 
you cannot say uh, you cannot claim my land. No, you cannot say that. that what you happen? can say, it has to happen. The government says land will be redistributed because the stability of the nation depends on it. But it may be a long and violent journey. John Sparks, Sky News in Limpopo.